Okay, so in this third part of the uh, unit five video tutorial on solving differential equations, we're going to move away from the very simplest type of um, single equation, single first order equation. And we're going to look at what happens if we try solving for a slightly more complicated system, and in particular, the LCR circuit. So uh, this is something that usually features in second year lab um, as an experiment. Um, uh, and um, it's a rather nice example of an oscillating system. So again, we can write down a set of equations for this system um, in terms of the voltages going around the circuit. Um, and so what you have is that the supply voltage is then dropped across the current times the resistor plus the uh, charge over the capacitance. And then the inductor comes in as the inductance times the rate of change of current. So now recognizing that um, the current is Q dot, dq dt, therefore di dt is q double dot or d2q dt squared. And so we can write this down as a second order differential equation. So lq double dot is equal to minus r over, um, sorry, rq q dot uh, plus q over c um, minus v um, as our equation. And then we just have to take the uh, l across the other side. Now, the problem is that um, solve IVP and ODE int can only solve uh, uh, first order differential equations, and this is a second order differential equation. So in order to go and use solve IVP on this, we have to somehow convert this problem to one that's only in terms of first order differentials. And actually that's quite straightforward because what we can do is we can take one second order differential equation and represent it as two first order differential equations. And the way we do that is simply by noting that, that um, the Q dt is the current, and then that second order differential equation we can write down in terms of di dt being a function of both i and q. Um, and so that second line of that equation there, you have to know both the charge and the current uh, in order to work out what the rate of change of current is going to be. Um, but that's okay. If we solve those two differential equations simultaneously, so dq dt is current and d current dt, di dt is uh, the rest of the equation, then we're able to find both the charge and the current at the same time. Now, the other thing, of course, we're going to need to go and know is we're going to need to know what the initial values of the uh, charge and the current should be in order to solve that problem. Okay, so we now go ahead and we can actually encode this up as our, as our model function. Um, so now the state variable that we're getting in, so in the earlier example, it was just Q, the charge. It's now going to have two things in it. It's going to have the charge uh, and the current. And what we're returning out of our model function is two things. It's going to be the rate of change of charge and the rate of change of current. So our model function looks like this. So it um, takes time as the first parameter takes the state variables to make it a bit less confusing. I've now called that state variable state. Um, and then it takes the other parameters, which are the inductance, the capacitance, the resistance, and the supply voltage. Uh, and so what we uh, do first of all is we unpack that state variable. That state variable has got um, two rows in it. Uh, the first row is the values of charge, and the second row is the values of current. Um, and then we're going to go and do our calculation. And that return function is just implementing the equations we, we just showed you. So it's saying that dq by dt is the first element, that's i, and di by dt, that's the second element, and that's just the equation uh, we had written down. So that's literally just writing down those two equations and returning them as two elements uh, of a list. OK, so uh, we go and do that, um, and we need to go and um, set up the values for the resistance, the inductance, and the capacitance. And we need to set up the initial values for the charge and the current. OK, so um, for this particular circuit, I'm going to uh, pull the resistance back down to 100 ohms. Uh, I'm going to set the capacitance at uh, 1 Henry. And um, sorry, the inductance at 1 Henry, the capacitance is going to stay at 2.2 microfarads. Um, and my initial values of state um, I'm going to have zero charge and zero current. So when I open the switch for the first time, nothing's happening. 
Um, we also need to adjust the time period because um, if we work out what we're expecting the resonant period of this circuit to be, it's a lot shorter than five seconds. So I'm going to create a, a new time range of zero to 0 0.1 seconds. So just looking at just 100 milliseconds. Okay, so um, we can now go off and tell it to go and run the solution. Um, and um, it's going to solve those two equations. And what we're going to get back in our state variable is the uh, charge and the current as a function of time. So the call is quite straightforward. It's very similar to what we just did. We just call it with a new function name uh, that we just defined, the new time range. Um, we set the initial value to be our um, initial zero state um, uh, uh, values, so that's zero and zero. We pass in the additional arguments we need for our function, which is the inductance, the capacitance, the resistance, uh, and the sort voltage source. Um, and we also still carry on passing in the, the method. Uh, and then what we get back, um, so result.y now has two rows in it because we have two equations. So the first row is the charge and the second row is the current. Um, and here I'm just plotting it. And just because the current is much bigger than the charge in this uh, particular example, in order to make it fit on the screen, I've just divided the current by a thousand. Um, and so what does this tell us? Well, what it tells us is that um, when we uh, start the simulation, uh, the charge uh, very, very quickly jumps up from zero um, and it then oscillates up and down and eventually settles down at a certain level. Uh, whilst the current, um, again, initially jumps up as the, as the capacitor charges, and then as the, as the charge on the capacitor is oscillating, that also means the current is oscillating and it eventually settles down at zero. So in other words, what we're looking at is we're looking at that um, capacitor being charged by the, um, by the voltage source, just as we saw before, but because of the effect of the inductance, that charging uh, has a ring on it. It oscillates up and down. It's a damped oscillation. And that shouldn't come as a surprise. If you go back to that differential equation, you realize that's basically a damped second harmonic, uh, simple harmonic motion equation that we've just written down. Um, it's a second uh, order differential equation with a first order term in it as well um, and a constant. Um, so physically you can actually see this. If you actually build that circuit and put an oscilloscope on, then this is in fact what you will see in terms of the current. You will see um, it, it oscillating backwards and forwards. And if you monitor the voltage across the capacitor, which of course is just measuring the charge on the capacitor, then you'll again you'll see it, it jump up and oscillate. Um, you can also work out an equivalent problem if we started it off with um, that amount of charge on the capacitor uh, and uh, zero uh, current and set the voltage source to zero, that would be the capacitor discharging. And again, you'd see the same thing. You'd see it drop very rapidly and then oscillate for a bit and gradually damp out. Um, and that all basically just follows from those equations. But here we're actually looking in, in real time at what's going on. 